So, episode four of Quantum Leap. And do you notice that they took out the dates? You know, it used to be the title of the episode and the date. Well, not in this series, but in the original Quantum Leap series. And I know some people are probably getting upset and going, Listen, man, this doesn't have anything to do with the original. It's its own thing. And I go, well, listen, man, if it was its own thing and had nothing to do with the original, they wouldn't keep talking about Dr. Sam Beckett. But I will say one thing about this episode. It was much better again when they eliminate focusing on the future. I think they should have done that from the beginning. Uh, knock off the conspiracy garbage angle that they were working on with this, you know, what is Janice and Ben working on? They should have been irrelevant past. They should have just focus on the leap itself. And then them saying, you know, and then, and then in like episode four or five, start talking about some of this stuff. But I don't know. They didn't do it that way. Uh, I would assume they could have done it. And there's a lot of stuff they didn't do, which I don't know why they didn't do either. I'm still going to complain about the show because the show's not great. It's a mediocre show. I will say this episode was better than th episode three. But these episode three and four were better than the first two episodes. And the sad thing is that the first episode garnered over three million viewers. And they lost a million viewers off the bat <laughs> after the premiere of the pilot. But this episode, he's a bounty hunter, a female bounty hunter. And his partner, who's also a bounty hunter, just proposed to him. But he doesn't say yes or no because... Ben doesn't know if the woman would say yes or no. And in the original history, they do not end up together. S but somehow he has this feeling that it has something to do with the next person they were supposed to apprehend. That they, she never, they never got to apprehend her and she never went to court. And it was a $500 fine or whatever. So he's, Ben asks his partner, his lover, Jake, to go with him to catch this woman. Find out she's a drug mule or kingpin or whatever in the 80s. And uh, they have to catch her and arrest her. Very good, and also the theme is uh, love in this episode between Jake and and Ben, or Ben and Ben Eva, the character, the person Ben leapt into, and Jake, you know, his partner, and Ben and Addison. I, Addison and Ben are growing on me. The only problem with this is their characters are kind of boring and lame. There's no, there's like with Sam, you got a lot of emotion and everything out of him from the beginning, and we knew that he was this great genius and all these things and. You got a lot of this gravitas, there's a lot of caring for him as a person because all he wanted to do was go home and talk to his dad and things like that. Like You knew like the first thing he wanted to do was call home. He remembered his home, old home phone number. And, that was, and then you find out, well, that was the whole reason because he left home and his father died and he had a heart attack. And his sister ended up in a bad relationship where she was getting abused by her, her husband. And she left home early too. And then um, his brother died in Vietnam and he just wanted to go back home to that time and that's what he wanted. He wanted to like fix the things he messed up with, even though hey, one of his rules was no correcting your own timeline or whatever. So with this Ben, I get it, but he has no motivation, like internal motivation. And Addison just wanting the him or whatever, you know, wanting Ben dealing with all her emotional stuff too. Eh. With Al, you could say. What we knew about Al right off the bat, he was a womanizer and an alcoholic. But as the series went on, you found out why he was a womanizer. Because the one woman he loved more than anything in the world left him because he was in Vietnam. He was a prisoner of war. And she got remarried. And he never was able to fall in love. But originally, he was an alcoholic because of that, too. And that's, that's how Sam meets him. And, you know, anyway, these characters are lame. <laughs> Sorry. They are, they're just lame. Um... But again, this episode was much better. There was a great scene with Ernie Hudson as Magic talking about how... But this is a problem too. But I'll say he did a great job giving that speech to Ian about how he Sam leapt into him and how he found out and how he reopened the program because he realized what Sam did in the original history. He would be dead. Sam leapt into him and saved him and his brother, you know, Sam's brother and the whole platoon. That was fantastic. That was a great scene. Cheesy writing. Dialogue. <laughs> That's another thing. The show's writing is not good. And I think this episode had... No, the pilot had two writers. And that shit was horrible. This one had one... It was it was better. This was a much better episode. But another thing... You know, it's a, when They go back to the... Uh, when uh, this guy Jake proposes to Eva or Ben. He, they go up to the bail bondsman... Uh, bail bonds store that their father... Her father owns. 
and he goes, the lights are off and the doors are jo- the door the doors ajar. Your father normally locks up. He uh, what? Everybody locks up. Why would you? Like, ugh, that was stupid. It's not like your father. Like this, there's something wrong. That's all he has to say. There's something wrong. Why is the door open? That's it. That's all you have to say. What? The, if the lights are off and the doors are jar, your father normally locks up. I mean, come on. Anyway, and also, Jake was kind of a bitch. He was so annoying throughout the whole episode. He had no character besides, why won't you marry me? You know, but besides that, I mean, th- th- this, th- that's, you know, besides that, like I said, Ernie Hudson did great. Uh, Asian security woman had a scene where she did something finally, and she's like, I, we have to do this. yippity do. I'm tough, I'm strong, I'm the security agent. And I'm just like, ugh. You know, they also had a psychiatrist on the show, Dr. Beeks, in the original, because this is a problem with this one I was going to say earlier. There's nobody leaping back. There's no waiting room. So it's his body going into, it's his soul then. It's not his body. Like, what is going on? Are they, they, like... And without the waiting room aspect, then it's just his body going into these people, and then, or his his aura, or his, I don't know how they're gonna say it, because the other person, what happens to them? Nothing. It's supposed to be Ben's body, supposed to leap back into the past with the essence of the person he leapt into around him, so people see him as the person he leapt into, while that person's in the future, and everyone in the future sees him as Sam or Ben, and Doctor Beeks would go to talk to them. That that's that's not here, and that did so much great things for season five of Quantum Leap. They, I, I know for a fact. Again, like I said, they saw a few episodes. That's it. The writers just saw a few episodes. The show could do much better, and I heard that they picked up the show with only two million viewers. They picked it up for the rest of this season, not a season two. So they greenlit this, and like uh, they did with Heroes, that was a show too that that I think NBC. I guess I don't know if all studios do this or not. So they greenlit the pilot, cheap, you know, didn't do well, didn't spend a lot of money on it. Then they said, okay, we're going to pick up the show for 10 episodes. So they probably have 10 episodes in the work, and now they're probably shitting their pants. But maybe now you know what to do. End the fucking future storyline. You can go to it back and forth. Have, have somebody come in to be the, the psychiatrist, or have fucking Addison have psychology as her fucking background too. And then start bring, introducing the people in the waiting room. Just do something like that. That there are people in the waiting room. Make, make these people were in a closet somewhere and nobody knew. Then do that. Do like all of a sudden out of nowhere, some guy breaks the, uh, breaks a door down from the fucking, uh, in the future. And then they go, what the hell? And then the security officer's bugging out. And he's like, what is that? It's Ben. It's Ben's here. What the hell? And then you find out, oh, it's the people in the waiting room. Because this thing actually does happen like this. And Janice has to explain you know, you could do that, and you don't have to do always the B storyline like that. You could just do slices of them, little splashes, like they did in season five of Quantum Leap, when Al would be in the future talking to the person that Sam leapt into, trying to get them to stop their, like, the Evil Leaper episode, where he's trying to convince the kid to stop doing these dangerous acts because his parents were killed in front of him, and he wants to be the Midnight Marauder. And he goes, you were seven years old, Arnold, seven. You have to stop this because you're going to end up dying. Or you can also do the things where like Sam in season four, I think five, season four or five, I think it was five, where his brain is merging with the person he leapt into and he starts acting like the person he leapt into sometimes, like the Lee Harvey Oswald episode or the trilogy episode, trilogy part two or three. In trilogy part two, he started like having the stutter of the kid that he leapt into or trilogy three, he had the heart problems that the person he leapt into had. Or I even think the original Evil Leaper episode, Sam kind of acted like he was a little bit slower than he normally was because he leapt into Jimmy again. There's a lot of things you can do. They can fix this. They really can fix this. I hope they're listening to the criticism. Uh, Ian uh, doesn't bother me. I'm not calling him Paul Rubens anymore. Because guess what? His, the way he dresses is the only thing resembling <laughs> the original Quantum Leap future. Because Al used to dress up all weird because he was supposedly from the future. That was the idea. I'm, I'm t- like, I don't know. Maybe do something where the timelines shift. <laughs> Like or something like they're in a they start into a different future that they're in the same time in this different present they're in 2022 but all of a sudden technology split splits or something I don't know they could but besides that they can fix everything else that's wrong with this show 
Man, this review is a little too long. I like this episode, again, when they focused on Ben and the past. Do more with Ben. Make him more, you know, let's do something to talk about his past besides Addison. Because this is like a little crutch you can just use for, like, get, get over this. You develop Addison having other, you know, talents. You know, let's do something better. And let's focus on, let's do an episode where we only focus on the leap. We're not focusing on the past. I'm pretty sure Ernie Hudson, these people don't, don't wouldn't mind a, a less work schedule as long as they're getting paid and then they interject into certain episodes. We don't need, every episode doesn't need to be an A, B storyline. Just let's do, let's do 10 episodes with an A storyline and 10 episodes with an A, B storyline. How about that? 20 episodes, that saves you so much time. That's, oh my God, we could get 20, 20, 20 episodes done. Anyway. That's my thoughts. And I'm going to use pictures in this and not too much stuff because NBC is a stick in their ass every time I post anything on Quantum Leap in here. And I, oh, yeah. Besides that, I forgot. The, I thought they weren't going to air the show on Monday because it was a holiday. Normally, when there's a holiday, they don't air new episodes. They wait till the following week. I was surprised that this, this thing aired. <laughs> That's why it's later than the Tuesday. Or because right as of right now, there's no copyright strike. But anyway, that's that. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. So finally, they ended the Addison Ben. Ben doesn't know who she is. That he's that he knows. He realized that Addison is his girlfriend. That's great. Thank you for finally ending that. Hopefully, there's no. They're probably gonna do more drama relationship wise about this. But you know, at least that's concluded with. Now let's. Hopefully the next episode will delve into something about Ben's past with his family, his mother, maybe his father. Do something. I would still like that Ben for it to be that Ben is Sam's son, even though he could have had another father. But he could have, she could have been pregnant with him. She met another guy in Korea. They got married. Ben was born there. Came here. He's a genius. Blah blah blah. And then Jan that's what Janice was trying to tell him or told him, and that's how he could leap past his lifetime and somehow track Sam. Do that. Don't go into the woke territory that you want to go to. We don't need today's politics. That's what I really don't like about it being set in this present, in our present time. Because it could be an alternate timeline future or present, I should say. That's the main thing that's bothering me. You know, we never dealt with our politics. Today's Kwame never dealt with today's politics in when they were filming. They dealt with that time period's politics. And they would say, yes, it's wrong. Segregation was wrong because by the 80s, we knew it was wrong. Even though there were some politicians that are kind of in office now that promoted segregation and wanted it and all these other things that you people should look up into. But yes, no, let's focus on the past timeline, how that was, let's not bring our society shit today into the show of what they're doing now. That's why I really dislike the present, that it's this. To, it's now. That's why I wish they could somehow diverge the timeline and all of a sudden everything changes and it's a futuristic present. That's all.